Hey guys, how's it going? Today is my last day with the ROG Strix 5700 XT. I bought it about a week ago, and in the past week, I was able to snag a 3080 from Best Buy. Uh, I got super lucky. As a side note, if you're on the hunt for a 3080, I would download the Best Buy app, make an account, set up Apple Pay. Uh, then you want to go to uh, nowinstock.com, select the RTX 3080 thread. And in this thread, there's going to be a bunch of links with the RTX 3080. Uh, every different uh, every different type of variation From here you can set up discord alerts and you can set up telegram alerts. I selected both um, Down here you can see a thread with a bunch of different comments uh, of people all hunting for the 3080 as well You can get some snippets of gold from here and you can get useless banter <laughs> The useless banter is kind of fun though. Everyone's kind of like a brother here. Everyone just wants to get themselves a card uh, Anywho so I used this, I got lucky, uh, Best Buy had an alert, I went on the app, and I was able to snag the card, and this is the picture right here. I did it on my uh, my mobile iPhone, I don't know if that makes a difference, but <clears throat> moving on though, today I'll be undervolting the ROG Strix 5700 XT, I'll show you the undervolting profile that I find stable, and then we're going to test it using the superposition benchmark, to give some context. Uh, the Superposition Benchmark is an extreme performance and stability test for PC hardware, video card, power supply, cooling system, uh, and cooling system. Check your rig and stock and overclocking modes with real life load. Also includes interactive experience in a beautiful detailed environment. It also has a pretty funny uh, overview. <laughs> a lone professor performs dangerous experiments in an abandoned classroom day in and day out. Obsessed with inventions and discovery beyond the wildest dreams, he strives to prove his ideas. Once you come to this place in the early morning, you will not meet him there. The eerie thing is a loud bang from the laboratory. Heard a few moments ago. What was that? Again. <laughs> First, let's go over the stock profile that we get from AMD. So these are the stock clock speeds. Uh, 800, 1450, and 2100. And here are the stock voltages 750, 808, and 1198, which is overkill in my opinion. Uh, here's the stock fan tuning profile. Um, the power tuning is set to 0% with power limit. Power limit is just the uh, amount of uh, watts that a GPU will consume depending on the situation or scenario that it's in. And then clock speed in regards to VRAM tuning uh, is set to 1750 by default. Moving on, now I'm going to go over the undervolting profile. So the undervolting profiles, clock speeds are going to be 800, 1400, and 2001. The voltage is going to be 750, 775, and 1050. The fan speeds, I dramatically increased. Uh, I have headphones in all the time, so I really don't hear the fans, and I would rather have my GPU run at a lot lower temps. For VRAM tuning, I jumped it up to about 1850, and then for the power limit, I increased it to 50%. Now I'm going to run the superposition benchmark, and we'll see what type of score we get.
Now, to apply some context to our score, I pulled up an article from Guru3D.com. They benchmark a bunch of different high-end GPUs. This article is before the release of the 3000 series uh, from NVIDIA, but it'll give us some insight into our score. So the first chart goes over the average FPS. Uh, in this benchmark test, the uh, Radeon RX 5700 XT only hits a average FPS of 41 frames, which in comparison to ours is kind of bad. But that being said, the 5700 XT that they're benchmarking is probably not the wrong Strix and it's probably running at stock settings. Um, but our average FPS would put us smack dab in the middle of the 2080 and the 2070. And in terms of price to performance, that's pretty amazing. Um, and then if we scroll down, we'll get the performance score. Our performance score was 7173. The 5700 XT that was tested in this benchmark came to a uh, score of 5532. This would again put a smack dab in the middle of the 2070 and the 2080 in terms of uh, performance again. And like I said, price to performance, this is a pretty amazing score. So, in conclusion, I'd go out on a limb and say that undervolting keeps the GPU temperatures down, which in my case, the GPU got to a maximum temperature of about 58 degrees Celsius in that performance test, still provides optimal performance, and will increase the overall longevity of the card. So, if I was keeping this card, I'd probably run this profile as a daily. If anyone has any thoughts, ideas, or remarks, please feel free to comment. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for future content such as this. Enjoy the rest of your day.